records are kind of like little time capsules of, you know, you remember when you bought it, you remember when you heard it. People born in the 90s didn't, didn't grow up with Tuesdays being new album release day and you running out to the local store on a Tuesday to pick up your favorite album because your favorite artist was putting something new out. Bananas Records, how can we help you? Hi, I'm Michelle Allen. I live in St. Petersburg, Florida, and I own a record store named Bananas Records. I'm Doug Allen, and we have worked here in this store together for over 40 years now. Well, we claim to be the largest record store in the world, and of all the places I've been, we've got to be. He's a great exaggerator. I tell people we have three million, he says 10 million. He just, you know, he just pumps it. Nobody knows how much. <laughs> but as I often say, this is the result of some pretty bad habits. He's one of those wheeler and dealer kind of guys. He is always trying to look for a good deal, and he's really good at accumulating things, especially records. The warehouse is amazing. It's a never-ending journey of, of records. You could put on a, a vinyl record, and it's almost like you hear it come to life, and it's like it's breathing to you. Some of them may have some battle scars or, or, or whatnot, right? And it's, you know, it, it tells a story kind of makes me wonder what that record has gone through. The record business became a new frontier of artistic enterprise. From Elvis Presley to the Rolling Stones. 1977, well, uh, Michelle and I were trying to decide uh, what kind of business we'd like to get into. We, we started a bookstore uh, on Central Avenue in St. Pete. Uh, once we decided on that, we started buying used books at garage sales or thrift stores, whatever, until after about a year, we had 13,000 of them in our garage. So one day, we were at a garage sale, and this lady had a stack of records. And there was a record in there by Joan Baez. And I said, the lady, how much do you want for this record? And she said, well, I'm only gonna sell the whole stack. So I bought the whole stack, and I took out that record, and I said to Doug, what are we gonna do with the rest of these records? And he said, well, just put them on the bottom shelf of the bookstore. So we did, and we sold every record. So we thought, well, wow, if this is going to be that easy, we'll just keep buying records. Walk in and it's just shelves and shelves and shelves of, you know, plastic wrapped vinyl. There was a scent in the store. I don't know if it was plastic and cardboard or what it was, but there, there, there was this smell that you get at one of those record stores that you just don't experience today. I'll never forget it. It will make all conventional disc and cassette systems obsolete. It's dustproof, scratchproof, digitally recorded, read by a laser, and it's called the compact disc. And that's it. Most people who had a vinyl collection just froze in time. That was it. It was just kind of, well, where do I go now? how many stores closed in that time period, probably a good 8,000 stores. If you think about that statement of 8,000 stores closed, that's 8,000 dreams right there. Uh, but, but it was a bummer. Um, 
Because at that point, there was really no, no hope of a, like a resurgence. Um, it was like, okay, well, it, it's finally done. We couldn't get people to stop coming. They just wouldn't stop coming. They just would knock on the door and, you know, say, when are you going to open? We'd say, we're not. And they'd go, why? How come? The pressure from collectors never allowed us to close the doors. Sales are up more than 50% this year for vinyl records. Yes, the hottest way to listen to music in 1915 is also one of the hottest ways in 2015. People are going back to records now because we have a whole generation that has grown up not being able to hold their music in their hand. They grew up with streaming services and they've never owned their music. And now I think younger people are starting to learn that you can take this home with you. It's yours, it's tangible. And I think that's really driving a lot of people in 2018. I've always wanted to like a tribute to my like favorite artists and favorite bands and favorite singers and so I thought by buying records and buying a record player I could just do them a little bit more justice. Me and my dad, <clears throat> of course he got me on music, so we went upstairs and found his old record player and like hundreds and hundreds of old jazz records. We just dug into them. I love the fact that it's so old because you're listening to something that's from the past, from that time period. So it's like really intimate, like you're you're there. I've always always loved the warm sound of an actual record. The bass tones are deeper. And when they play back, they actually resonate the room a lot more than what you get in a, uh, a digital compressed state. It's almost one of those things you just kind of hear it and know it. The people collecting now are much younger, under 30, and when they hear a record of something that they like, it's a totally new experience for them. New group of people still thinking the same way. You make people happy and you make money at the same time, there's nothing like it. <laughs> enjoy the music, enjoy, enjoy the medium, because you know, the album art, you know, the lyric sheets, all the liner notes, all the, you know, it's just, it's just really neat. Vinyl is vinyl. Play it on what you play it on, as long as you enjoy the music. That's what it's about. I can tell.